this is the third day of looking at PC releases for 2018 and 2019, watching some game trailers and, you know, seeing which games actually look good. And it's MMOs is the first thing we're doing. I'm okay today. It's like 9.15 and I'm starting the stream. I am literally three plus hours late. <sighs> or at least later than I wanted to be because we got thrown off with having dinner at different times and stuff like that. Um, do I want to watch a lot of these MMOs? I don't know. What do we actually have to go through? Let's check real quick. Let's check which uh, genres we actually have to look through. How are you though? How's stuff? How's life? How's um, video? Did you stream today? Um, okay, let's look. We looked at RPGs, shooters, platformers, blah blah. We have to look at MMOs, sim games, puzzle games, and then sports and racing. So, we're probably gonna fly through sims and MMOs and sports and racing. This shouldn't take more than an hour. It really shouldn't even take close to them. <sighs> Star Citizen. I have heard a lot about this game. Um, I've heard a lot about this game. I... You would probably, uh... I the, the what I know about this game is it has been a long time in development and that it is absolutely massive, right? Is he being serious when he says that everything is a real asset, as in like if you see a store in the distance that has like a medical badge, you can like go all the way to them. The game is never coming out. Tell me about it because I really have no comments to make on it because I don't know anything about it. It's not my type of game. I, I'm not a big fan of space type games like EVE Online, uh, X, you know, the X series like X3, Tension, X2 and all that stuff. That thing is 23 million kilometers away. Look, his map his map marker is 23 million kilometers away. See, this type of game, like, really... This is too difficult for me. It's a massive open world game, you do whatever you want. So it does have space trading and it has like planetary style. Like, can you actually no man? Is this gonna be No Man's Sky or can you actually like land and go to these buildings? Because that's cool, but it also sounds expensive. It also sounds like it's never coming out. Didn't this game get kickstarted at some point? Um, Star Citizen. Uh, is there a link to a Kickstarter? Crowdfunding. Kickstarter Crowd Citizen. C Crowd Citizen? Star Citizen Crowdfunding Kickstarter. There we go. That that was what I was looking for. 34,000 backers pledged $2 million off the 500,000. And which year was this? Which year was this? Estimated delivery, November 2014. <laughs> Wait, that isn't the release date they were looking for, is it? So you trade for... Is it basically like EVE Online? Is it basically like EVE Online? But did they really think that they were going to deliver this by 2014? Or was that just the end of the Kickstarter? I mean, ah, fuck it. I'm not gonna look at this anymore on stream. I'm sure anybody who's watching this video on YouTube or like drops into the stream already knows whether or not they're invested into Star Citizen. Personally, MMOs, <clears throat> I find it really difficult to get invested into MMOs because the casual ones are too casual, the hardcore ones are too hardcore, and there's no in between. I'm also at a point in my life where I don't really want to join like a group of 60 raid guild players and get into drama. Like, I don't give a shit. Um, Worlds Adrift. We'll have a look at some of these. Some of the shorter trailers. This looks a little bit more simplified, a little bit more... I don't know. 
Whilst Worlds Adrift is in closed beta, you'll have the opportunity to become a founder by purchasing one of our three founders packs. Each founders pack will grant you an This is like ASMR. Listen. Immediate access to the closed beta, a copy of the game, and exclusive content for our founder community who support That is actually like ASMR. Give me a second. I want to see what the top comment on YouTube is. Founders packs will regularly be sold in limited quantities and will only be available during our closed beta period. Nobody said anything about ASMR. Founders packs will regularly be sold in limited quantities and will only be available during our closed beta period. This is so that our servers can... <laughs> looks a bit bad. To be honest, it looks a bit bad. Wild West Online... Yeah, we're gonna buzz through these. This looks okay. Okay, this is different looking. Ashes Ashes of Creation by Alpha Zero. This actually looks a bit different. This looks um Yeah. Beta. Alpha beta. That's why it's called an alphabet. It's not called an alpha beta. Okay, we're gonna watch the first ten seconds of this trailer again, right? But tell me, tell me, um, tell me, tell me if this is a little bit more fitting, okay? We're gonna watch the first 10 seconds again. Here we go. You ready? You, you feel me? The, 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 the king, the king, no, it's in Lost but this, it's Skyrim. Isn't this just Skyrim? Okay, so far, what is it? it? You've just shown me scenery. What is it? Where's the gameplay? Hello, gameplay? I mean, ancient ruins. Tense. Here we go. Actual civilization. I mean... <sighs> okay. Yeah, we're not looking any deeper into them. Air. Ascent. Infinite Realm. No. Dead Maze. February. Oh, no. Oh. Dead Maze is a massively multiplayer zombie game where you must fight, scavenge, and craft to survive. Uh, it doesn't look like it's for me. Yeah, this looks a little bit too much like RuneScape or Habo Hotel for me to be interested in it. I seriously, seriously doubt I would get too involved in a game like this. Okay, we're done with MMOs. That was literally seven minutes. So, good. Maybe we can get this done in like half an hour. I mean, I'm not trying to fly through these games, but it's, a, it's genres that I don't really care about. Farming Sim, I, I have one of the Farming Sims. Let me tell you a little bit about Farming Sim. Oops, that was leaked by the way. I'm kidding, there was nothing in that conversation. I have Farming Sim 2013, I have less than two hours in it and I bought it in 2012. It was absolute fucking garbage. It was completely broken dog shit game. I assume that they've fixed some stuff up. Uh, I don't really care about it. Prehistoric Kingdom. Building a park. Jurassic Park, boys. Let's go. Let's watch this. It's like a mobile game. It did. It did. Okay. This is nice. I like those building animations. Cool, cool. Prehistoric Park. Jurassic World game looks really good. There's a Jurassic World game coming out, like, as in a Jur actual Jurassic Park game. Oh, I mean, yeah, it looks like any roller coaster tycoon style building game. Graphics are kind of basic. Um, I would say that when you're looking at things like that building there, that I mean, it says it's pre-alpha footage. That building looks like it's in need of some serious textures right now. Okay, so you got like basic world building tools. Every game developer has those. Show me some stuff. Sh show me something unique. Get to the dinosaurs.
Okay, I'm making a prediction. I'm 2 minutes and 16 into a 3 minute and 13 trailer. If I don't see a dinosaur by the end of this, then what's the point? I mean, that was beautiful and everything, but no dinosaurs. It looks like they've got a dinosaur video there. I don't know. I don't really care about this. I don't really care. Jurassic World Evolution. Is this the one you're talking about? Coming June 2018. If you've ever sat in front of your TV screaming at the characters in Jurassic Park movie for making predictable fatal mistakes, Jurassic World Evolution is your chance to make the same avoidable blunders. Oh, to make the same. Oh. While jumping through the typical economic and management hurdles that business simulation games are known for, you'll also have to deal with the possibility of your over-engineered attractions climbing right out their fences. I thought it said feces. Holy shit. Um, and eating tourists. Uh, intentionally courting disasters with dangerous dinos will inevitably bring the same sickly as building roller coasters shaped like launching ramps. Let's have a watch. Seniors try VR. We should watch this. Man, old people in VR. Alright, let's watch. Pre rendered footage. Ooh, we'll look up the gameplay video then. Okay. So they've definitely got that aesthetic uh, in terms of the buildings and stuff of Jurassic World, which had a really concrete kind of futuristic aesthetic. I kind of like it, but this is all pre-rendered so far, right? Well, watch the gameplay one. Wait, 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 we can't, we can't do this. Uh, there we go, here we go. Here we go, lads. You ready? <laughs> oh man, that's what it's gonna be like. It's gonna be like trailer and then release, and the trailer's like da 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 da, -da and then the release is like burp, 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 burp. fuck. I love it. Okay, cool. Um, let's see if we can get the gameplay trailer for this. First official gameplay demo. Brand new, 22 minute long. Let's have a look-see. These guys are actually in. These guys, look, they're set. They're actually in the rainforest with... Fletcher and executive producer Rich Newbold. I believe those are plastic plants. Yeah, those are plastic plants. So obviously, like I said, we came all the way out to LA for this. It's been a really refreshing event. Really uh, plastic time. plants. So you're saying that you think it was another type of game before and then they got bought over. I think that could be the thing. I mean, he says he's been working on it for a long time. <clears throat> Okay, let's skip a little bit. I want to see some gameplay. So they've asked the Ratosaurus. He seems fairly happy there, munching down on the on the meat. Um, so I think, uh, in addition to the dinosaurs, there's uh, a load of structured objectives that you can do in the game too. So uh, I'm going to uh, complete this active contract, what we call a contract here. So we've got a science contract active here to. Form an expedition for at least one herbivore fossil. 
Now, contracts are uh, jobs that you undertake for one of the three divisions in the game. We've got science, entertainment, and security. And this is for science, so this will improve my standing with that division, and that will lead to further uh, unlocks and further consequences later down the line. So I'm going to head to my expedition center and look at the expedition map. It shows me all the dig sites I've got. I mean, this looks fine, right? So one part of the game that we're, we're putting a lot of detail into is the authenticity of the game. Um, the dig sites that you're using in the game are based on real-world dig sites, and the fossils and the dinosaurs that you find in there are based on real-world uh, science. You want it to be as real as possible. And there's a lot of information about the dig I sites mean, themselves. I mean, like, the if the they're... Um... The dinosaurs that you're... If they've been working on this game before, I, I can see this being a good game. Is it something I'll play? Probably not. But, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to put that on the list. It's not something for me. I mean, I had a problem with City Skyline where I couldn't read the text. It was all blurry. I have tried this game twice and I've installed the text fix. I'm just not a City's simulation kind of guy. So, yeah... I mean, it looks good. I give it its minute, but I don't know. Not for me. What is this? Frostpunk. When we end up with next to nothing. We don't do what we believe is right. What we do will make us right. It is not shelter nor food that brings us consolation. We can add sawdust to make them more filling, if not exactly tasty or healthy. <laughs> Put some asbestos in there. For it is hope that makes us grow. that there is more of us and if not that we oh. are enough so it's from the same people who made this war of mine I mean it looks interesting it looks like a typical city building game with you know a twister you know which is probably what all of these really boil down to um like Jurassic World and Jurassic Park and stuff, you know? Atomic Crops. Ooh, this is one that looks like it doesn't have a whole bunch going on. Um, why is this under simulation game? One of these things is not like the others. Okay, I mean, Atomic Crops looks like my type of game, actually, to be quite honest. But this is, this is not like the others at all. Farm, marry, kill. Oh, wow. Instead of fuck, marry, kill, it's farm, marry, kill. I mean, Atomic Crops is a roguelike farming simulator, like Harvest Moon Stargy Valley, but then, you know, a little bit like Gungeon or something. <sighs> Ace Combat 7, Skies Unknown. Let's have a look at that. Man, I love I love streaming this type of content. Why is this so fun? What the hell? Oh, game featuring briefing PS4 VR modes. What's this? Ace Combat Seven. You, 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 you. Okay, you guys can't see that. It says E R U S E A Eruzi Eruzi. Wait, tell me how do you fucking pronounce this shit? Eruzi Eruzi. Erusi? Fuck, who knows? Let's watch the shit. See your fighter intrude to life scale through VR. Oh, wow! That could be fucking cool! Static objects do really well in VR because you don't need a lot of, like, power to render them. This could be sick. Is this actually... Can you fly them? In VR on console? That's big. If you can fly a plane in VR on console, that is big for them. The console plebs. That's big.
Wow. That's cool. That's really cool. That is really, really cool. I wonder if the PC version of this... Oh, wait, after a 2014 release on PC? Huh. So... Is Ace Combat 7 already on PC? But Oh, wait, yes it was. Jurassic World Evolution is there, £45. 7. It wasn't Ace Combat 7 the one that had anime skins for the planes? Whatever, that's kind of cool. I mean, if they're bringing it out with some VR support or whatever, that's sick, right? I'm going to click pre-order and see what happens. Select platform. Okay. Why is this on the list if it's not for PC? Come on, bro. Fuck off. And why would you buy it for Xbox One X if it Xbox One X doesn't have VR? Right, Tropico 6, if you played the other ones, you know what you're getting into. Pizza connection free. Okay, let's go. Please be funny. Please entertain me. That's a bop. That is a bop. That is a bop. I'm liking it. Is that wrong? I'm actually liking this. Wait, what happened there? Oh, it was just the screen transition. Create your own unique pizzas. <laughs> right. We are absolutely 100% getting this game. Look, you can put ants and grasshoppers on maggots on your pizza. We can make a pizza just called the sausage. It just has like dough, just like sausage, just everywhere. <laughs> this actually looks like a lot of fun, especially for like a stream game, like sausage and eggs and just have like a big sausage and like two eggs at the bottom. Fuck dude, this kiss could be great. Just like a ton of pepper, just a ton of pepper on the, on the sausage. Nothing else. A raw carrot on it. I'm I'm actually liking this. This actually looks really, really good. It's already out? Oh damn. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's on Green Man Gaming and on Steam as well. It's called Pizza Connection Free. Whoa. It's $25 and it has mostly negative reviews. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at the reviews real quick. Why do they recommend a, a GTX 970 and an i5 5th gen? What the hell? 80, this guy has 84 hours. I really don't want to give a bad review. I hope they'll improve the game. The characters walk through furniture, you can totally block the entrance, they'll still walk in. Uh, you can't train employees, very few items to customize in the restaurant. I mean, he's played 84 hours of this. Overall, way more shallower than 1984 Pizza Tycoon. And it's too buggy. You know what? I was gonna add this to the list because that seemed absolutely hilarious. That seemed like a lot of fun. Pizza Connection Free. I will definitely keep my eye out for an, a content update for Pizza Connection Free. And maybe possibly play another Pizza Connection game at some point. Wait. 
This was released in 2001? This is Pizza Connection 2. This is Pizza Connection 2 and it looks almost identical. This looks almost identical. And it has the same trailer format where you can make the pizzas. What up, Malapisha, dude? I, am I feeling alright? I mean, it looks like a good game. Pizza Connection 3 looks really fun, but it has mostly negative reviews. It looks, it looks decent. Um, Instagram. It says they've got an Instagram. But they don't have an Instagram. Didn't I just say that they have an Instagram? Look, at Pizza Connection. And they, they don't have one. Fuck, I need to log in. Fuck it. Um, <clears throat> I mean, Pizza Connection looked okay. Looked okay. Trail Makers, let's have a look. I love when a, a, a trailer starts with a real jam. This looks okay. This actually looks okay. It looks like, you know, it looks like the same type of thing that's been out before. I believe there's a similar game to this, but yeah, flashbulb. What did they make? Just made that. Okay, have they published before? No. <clears throat> so it's in early access. It's online multiplayer. It looks okay. It doesn't look like my type of game, but it definitely looks like a lot of fun. Reminds me a little bit of Besieged, and I think there's another couple of games like this. Actually, it reminds me of the old days of Gary's Mod, when you used to go on GM Construct to make cars with your friends. You know, back when I had friends. Let's go. Anno 1800. I believe I've played an Anno game. Yeah. That boat is going way too quickly to be that close to a dock. Holy... What the... That was some speed to be coming into dock app. That's gonna crash, bro. Holy moly. Okay, Police Station Simulator 18. Isn't this literally just a screenshot from Grand Theft Auto? <sighs> nah. Parkasaurus. I'm beginning to see a theme here with the dinosaur park games. <laughs> you know when games have like a low budget and the cringe factor just triples? Like listen to this. Listen to this one more time.
Okay, so we've just looked at literally three, well, three um, dinosaur games. Prehistoric Kingdom, which looks like a knockoff of Jurassic World, which was Jurassic World Evolution, sorry, which was a game being developed separately to Jurassic World's franchise, but then I think they got bought over, maybe, and it became a Jurassic World game, and now we've got this one, Parkosaurus Rex. <laughs> oh, just Parkosaurus, sorry. <sighs> yeah. I don't know why you would spend 10 bucks on Parkosaurus, unless it's on mobile. Is it on mobile? Mm -mm. You don't even have a early access and it's out in spring, which is basically, it should be out already. Okay, Yandera Simulator. Um, there's a whole controversy with Yandera Simulator. I don't even want to open the website. You're not allowed to play Yandera Simulator on, on a Twitch. Um, because one of the main things about Yandera Simulator is the focus of the game is uh, essentially like too perverted for Twitch. So you're not actually allowed to play Yandera Simulator. I, I won't even open the website. Basically, you play like it's a Hitman game set in a school, um, which has its own ramifications. But then it's also a Japanese school, so it's like anime panties and stuff. It's it also features kind of underage girls in the shower at parts, in, even if they're wearing towels or they're covered by soap bubbles, which I think was the original thing, and now they're covered by towels. You just, yeah, the Yandera dev has been trying to get his game allowed on Twitch because it is in early access already, but yeah... A, it's not for me. B, it's not allowed on Twitch, so let's just move on. Rise of Industry. Okay, let's have a look. Welcome to Tranquil Valley, a charming balance of small towns, scattered lakes, and rolling hills. Its quiet citizens lead quiet lives, dreaming of nothing beyond their cup of morning coffee and the radio news hour. Not so the industrialist. He is a man of vision, a revolutionary. Take, for example, this forest. The average Joe sees trees and rocks, perhaps a bird if he is truly observant. But what does our industrialist see? Opportunity. What is the worth of a few measly trees compared to the infrastructure they can be used to create? The industrialist knows the answer, and so he puts those trees to their proper use. And with that lumber, he constructs another factory, and another, and another. Soon, Tranquil Valley is a bustling city. Its citizens no longer tire. Okay, so let me see some gameplay of this, maybe. Industrial Empire. Gather your resources. Build your factory. Advance your technology. Okay, so... If the game is this kind of 2D graphics or whatever, you're gonna have to hope that the gameplay is there. Or it has like some comedy and stuff. You know, whatever. Um, Rise of Industry, Early Access 2018. I don't know, it's not going on the list. Project Hospital by Oxymoron Games. Okay. This immediately looks like it's not for me. I'm just gonna flick through the trailer. Look at their faces. Are these the faces of the doctors or the patients? Oh, these are the doctors. <laughs> okay, yeah, if you're nostalgic for Sim Hospital, there you go. Project Hospital. Railway Empire, let's have a look. And I saw one game there just below this that looks like it's really good. I know a lot about it, so we'll get there. Okay, Kona, brother! Yeah! Woohoo! Hey there, brother! I took that train right through that mountain, I did! Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, Tex! 
I sure did take that train right down that mountain right dip 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 dip. Brother, I took that train right down to Oklahoma, so I did. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so it looks like you get to customize the train quite a lot. It looks like you get to customize the routes quite a lot. It looks good. It's coming out on console. PS4, Xbox One, PC. It's called Railway Empire by Gaming Minds, Gaming Minds Studios. It looks okay. It looks decent. I mean, there you go. And I don't know. When you say do some of the studios think these games look good, I feel like a lot of them, a lot of them behind the scenes, they might be a good game. Like it takes the same amount of effort to develop a really good looking game as it does a bad looking game. It's the underlying structures of the game that are good or bad. Uh, I can't really think of any examples. That's actually kind of difficult to give examples of. But you can always tell when a game looks amazing and then has really bad controls or really bad like scripting and really bad game engine. You know, that always sticks out like a sore thumb. If a game looks bad, you don't expect it to play well, but a lot of these games play really well. I mean, one game that I didn't think looked very good is We Need to Go Deeper. Actually, I have quite a few hours in this, and I believe it's still early access. Yeah, it's still in early access. I have 14 hours in this game. I mean, this game surprised me. I really enjoyed it. It doesn't look like much. It really doesn't look like much, but I really enjoyed. We need to go deeper. It's a great game to play with like three or four people. Okay, my time at Porsche. This game is great. You can download a demo right now, which is about eight hours of gameplay. Um, if you want to. It's available on Steam. Um, the full price of the game is 16 pounds. It is essentially Stardew Valley, but three dimensional. The characters are quirky. I think it's made by a Chinese company. Um, I may be wrong on that. It's not Japanese though. I think it's a Chinese company that are making it. It's really good. It actually looks like a lot of fun. It could be a game that I'll actually buy and start to play. I'm basically waiting for a full release of this. But that's not to say that I might not buy this in early access and play a little bit. The only thing right now with it is it doesn't have that much depth. I believe if you play it, you get about 8 hours of gameplay from it so far. But the full game will be like 60 plus. <clears throat> I think it looks good. I honestly think it looks really good. So that's my time at, Por at Porsche by Panfia Games, who made another similar game called Planet Explorers, but dinosaurs and shit. It's kind of like Ark. It was terrible. Um, but the studio is basically reformed. They are reformed. Uh, I trust this product. I really trust it. Because the only thing it's lacking right now is content. That's all it lacks is content. So my time at Porsche, I'm going to add that to the list, actually. That's the first one from the simulations getting added to the list. My time at Porsche. Pure Farming 2018. I'm gonna quickly buzz through this and just see if it's realistic or not. Wait a minute. We're gonna have to watch all of this. I wanna hear the song now. I really wanna hear the song. Some people say no job is too hard for a hero. But when the job is to feed the world, one hero is not enough. It 
it's really hard to make a farming game look interesting. <sighs> My advice would be for anybody who's looking for a farming game, your choices are basically pure farming 2018 and then farming simulator 20, 2019 or farming simulator 19. Um, look for which one has the best reviews. That's literally it. Like, wait until they're both out. Look for the best reviews. Not adding that to the list. I can't remember what... We're on puzzle games. And puzzle games seems like a really short list. And then we have sports and racing. Which, again, is a very short list. Um, let's look for puzzle games. This this could be where literally every game gets added to the list. Because they, they could be pretty good. Oh! Dota 2 is getting its own card game. Huh. Yeah, I wouldn't, is card games classed as puzzle games? <sighs> Valve, 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 Valve. In the last 10 years, Valve have went from being this developer of some of the most fantastic series, everything from the Half-Life series to Left 4 Dead to Portal, and I mean, recently, pretty much made Dota 2, CSGO, and put loot boxes into Team Fortress 2, Dota 2, and CSGO. And then just make loot boxes. So for them to make a card game, a game that every six months you could do a refresh of the cards and uh, release new packs and... <sighs> kind of makes me sad to see what Valve has become. As much as I love the Steam platform, and I'll probably never leave it, I would I would be so sad if I had to leave my 544 games on Steam if Steam got somehow shut down. So um yeah, I I hope they continue to make a lot of money so that I don't have to lose my 500 games. <sighs> Other than that though, Valve are really making nothing. We heard that Valve were working on releasing a game that was going to be showcased at E3 this year. If that is just it, I am going to be so bummed out. E3 this year, I'm really looking forward to E3. I'm so excited for E3. Gameplay trailers for all those games we've been looking at so far. A little bit more info on GTFO would be amazing. Um, what was the other one? The Strange Brigade. Like, so many of these games, I need more info. Like, I'm hyped for them now. I'm, I'm fanboying already. E3 is in... June, I think. Uh, I think so. I don't know. Give me a second. When is E3? Yeah, E3 is the 12th of June to the 15th of June. So that's like... Two and a half months away. Mm -hmm. There's a game called Two Point Hospital that's kind of like a theme hospital. Cool, cool. Yeah, I don't know. Those type of management games, I don't really play. It could be good, though. Like, it's like I'm saying, if you're interested in playing a hospital simulation, you have a choice. It looks like this year you have a choice as to which one's, like, coming out and stuff, right? And you can choose whichever one you want to... What the fuck is going on here? A woman and her dogs? Hell are you doing? Linus has an Apple II themed PC case. Okay, we're not watching that video. But I will watch that after the stream. It's time to be the change. Sure. That's a fascinating difference. To be man and woman. And when we can add that we are humankind, then we are free. 
because we feel such a long time that there's something going wrong. And we can feel that we want to be different. And so we have to be. We have to be human. Nothing more. Are they shooting each other? Love. As human. I am lost for words. That... That seemed a little bit like Lemmings, but in 3D. It's a movie and a game. It's just the trailer again. Um. Oh, so what we just watched was essentially the movie. Is that it? Oh, I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, like it's trying to be re. It looks like this studio is a Japanese studio, and they've come out with previous projects. Um. I don't know. I don't think it's going on the list. I don't know how much gameplay is there. It looks like they're focusing on art rather than gameplay, but that was definitely something. Um, Mount Your Friends 3D. I am going to add this to the list. I believe this is already out, though. <laughs> Mount Your Friends 3D is already out. I think you got a discount if you already own it, which I do. If you haven't played Mount Your Friends before... Okay, you don't get a discount. But they are early access, version 0 0.61. Mount Your Friends 3D. It's Mount Your Friends, but in 3D. Um, what can go wrong, right? Can I just say that this game is allowed on Steam, but genital jousting isn't? There we go. Mount your friends 3D. A hard man is good to climb. Um, if you're interested in Mount Your Friends 3D, it's £5.19, which would probably be like ten dollars. Um The first one is a lot of fun. I don't know how many hours I have on it. I have a lot though. I have twenty three hours. I've almost spent a full day of my life climbing men. Um let's have a look. Flipping death. This looks good, actually. Like, I'm kind of drawn in by the aesthetic. I like kind of... I like kind of Tim Burton-y, creepy-esque stuff. You know? I, I kind of do. Um, okay, release date to be announced. Platform, multi-platform. Let's watch their trailer. For Penny Dowood, death had a strange flip side. Literally. Welcome to... Well, if you're here, you're most likely dead. But for Penny, there was no rest in peace. A job? But what do I have to do? Oh, you know, the usual. Well, I did once temp in the kindergarten. From the creators of Sticker to the Man comes a new adventure with an innovative flip side. Ooh, smells like wet socks in here. Your ice cream just talks to me. Possess and control the living to help the ghosts with their problems. Got any super glue? Where's <laughs> that Dr. Laser? Yeah, baby. He wasn't even a good kisser. Why am I doing this? I always assumed dying would be the last thing I ever did, but well, here we are. That looks really good. I'm actually pretty hyped for that. It's called Flipping Death. Uh, let's see if it's available on Steam. That looked really good. I liked it. Um, doesn't look like it's on Steam. Okay. I'll add it to the list. It seems like it's coming out on Switch. Looked nice. Looked uh, kind of cute. Looked a little bit like Scribble Knots. Maybe a little bit like Guacamole or something. I don't know. It's a little bit simpler than that, maybe, though. 
Um, Mugsters. We have already looked at Mugsters. Uh, Mugsters is already on the list. So, yeah, that's in the first video that I uploaded to YouTube. It looks good, though. Should Product we watch it again? Rated. Let's watch it again. It's Team 17. The guys made worms. It's, uh, good. Remember this sick song in the trailer? It looked good. <clears throat> Looks fine. Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh man. You've got to think when you're playing a game like that, right? And like the car makes it across the gap and then just suddenly falls back in. Those moments are hilarious. I mean... That's already on the list. I'm not going to add it twice. Mugsters. It looks really good. Team 17 and Rank Out are the devs. I think Team 17 is the publisher, possibly, but, you know, still. A publisher as good as Team 17 isn't going to, like, sully their brand by getting involved with a half-assed game. So you can at least, like, guarantee you're going to get a good game out for that at the end. I'll move this webcam a bit. It's cutting off the top of my head. Felt weird. Um, let's go. This is called Photographs. Have you ever made a mistake? Something serious. Something that hurt the people you care about. What if you change that? Okay. What would you do? Um, I guess that's photographs. It sounds quite different to Redwood's previous games. You must build a boat and ten million dollars, huh? <sighs> photographs explains creator Looker Redwood is wait. Oh, Photograph Explains Creator Luca Redwood is a puzzle game. It's not a puzzle game. It's five puzzle games, each with different mechanics and their own story. And inside those five puzzle games, there's a narrative game where photographs, puzzles, and audio come together to tell a complete story. Sounds quite different to Redwood's previous game, You Must Build a Boat in 10 Million. Oh, so his previous game was called You Must Build a Boat in 10 Million? Let's have a look at this. I'm liking the music. It's a bop, dude. Okay, that looks like shit, though. Um, I don't think we're adding photographs. I don't think so. Nimbitus. Okay. So, immediately, this is looking like FTL with a bit more control. Oh, wow. This is a lot different from FTL. Oh, shit! That looks cool as fuck! Wait, have I played the Sexy Brutal? I think we talked about that before. Can I show this game on stream? I think... Oh, yeah, you told me about this, and you said it was really good, and then I didn't go any further, because we got playing other stuff. You told me about this. This is a puzzle thing, right? Murder mystery puzzle thing? Cool, cool. I haven't played it, though. Definitely have not played it. I'll probably watch a YouTube video on it, and I'll decide whether or not I want to get it or not. The graphic style isn't really for me, but if the gameplay's there, if it's pretty cool, I'll check it out. I'll check it out, dude. 
Um, what do we think of Nimbatus? I actually think this game looks really good. In a way. This actually looks pretty good. The Space Drone Constructor. Nimbatus takes inspiration from games like Kerbal Space Program and Besieged, tasking you with building space drones that are hilarious in their failures as they are triumphant in their successes, and often over-engineered. Each of Nimbatus' randomly generated planets have unique missions that call for using the hundreds of available drone parts in creative ways. The trailer alone is a lesson in design iteration with a healthy dose of comedic timing. Nimbatus will be entertaining, entering early access in mid-2018, with a full release later down the road. In the meantime, you can try out the demo. There's a demo on Steam. Let me let me just write this one down because this this actually looks this looks good. No, ah, it's loud. It's very loud. Um, demo. Demo. Um, okay. Download the demo here. Right, let me go turn off display capture in case I have to down. Oh! You have to subscribe to their newsletter, and then you have to opt out of their newsletter to get the demo. Uh, maybe another day. Maybe another day. And I mean that. I have seen this. This is called Untitled Goose Game by House House. And... The Twitter page for this is lit. You've probably seen this. This actually got a lot of Twitter stuff. This is this is a hilarious game where you play a goose and you have to like <laughs> you have to take the keys off the farmer and stuff. It looks hilarious. It's like Metal Gear Solid with a fucking goose. Look at him! He's a fucking goose, dude. Honk! <laughs> it's a goose, dude! He's a fucking goose! Honk! I love it. Okay. <laughs> you basically have to be a pest, the game. Okay, untitled. Goose Game, which I think is gonna remain called Untitled Goose Game. Um, so that video is from about six months ago. I believe it's not quite out yet. Um, I believe it's not quite out. It'll be a while. Oh my Jesus, suffering fuck. Their last game was called Push Me Pull You. It's on PS4, Windows, Mac, and Linux, and it literally looks like a Junji Ito horror thing where some type of cat-dog-esque, two-headed human centipede. What the fuck? Okay. Okay. Um, until Goose Game looks good. Looks good. <laughs> UFO 50. Team of all-star indie devs, included, including the creator of Spelunky and Downwell, are collaborating on the collection of 50 small games. Everything from 2D platformers and side-scrolling beat-em-ups to golf and RPGs. Everything's 8-bit and shares a 32-color palette. And there's a fictional backstory suggesting all 50 games were made by the same forgotten company from the 80s. That sounds... Pretty lit. Doesn't that sound lit? Like, imagine if there's like some deeper storyline or like, you know, some hidden messages from the developers and stuff that could, like, the fake developers. That sounds lit. Let's, um, I mean, oh god, I couldn't show you the thumbnail again, can I? Okay, it looked like one of the characters looked like the old Samus. I don't know. Let's just watch it. <clears throat> This actually looks lit, though. Did 
This looks lit. That fucking music switch like caught me off guard. It just seemed really funny. <laughs> it's a fucking bop, dude. <laughs> That's like a tower defense game. Okay. So this looks really lit. I think this is definitely getting added to the the list. One of the cool things is, like, a lot of these games probably wouldn't run on old consoles that had this style of graphics, because, like, definitely not this tower defense game. That would be way too complex for an old console to run. But, it looks like it works on this. This is lit. It's called UFO 50. This character looks like Samus, but I believe this is the golfing game. This is lit, dude. Got a little fucking submarine and shit. An onion car. Come on. Like, UFO 50. Let's add this. This looks great. I actually am really hyped for this. Uh, what are they doing about it in terms of website and downloads and saving it and stuff? Um, okay, in general, the games are slightly smaller than commercial 8-bit titles from the 80s, but rest assured, they're full games and not micro games or mini games. Completing the entire collection could easily take over 100 hours. Um, who's doing what? Each game has a director who came up with the core concept, but everyone on the team worked on games they didn't direct and help with art programming design. Are the games connected anyway? Story of UFO 50 is that the games were all created in the 80s by a fictional company that was obscure but ahead of this time. They're all connected by a unique 32-bit color palette and restrictions we decided to make them feel more authentic. So maybe they all use D-pads in A and B or whatever. Um, kind of multiplayer is available. All the games will feature single-player story mode and it and roughly a third of the games will feature their cooperative or competitive multiplayer modes as well. It didn't say online. Um, plan to release the game on PC first in 2018 and then move to other platforms. We're still deciding on price, but we want it to be an easy purchase. I mean, that sounds lit. That actually sounds really lit. It's the type of thing that maybe should happen more often. You find in the comic book world when there's a lot of comic book cr creators that, you know, it, it can take as much as two or three days to do a single page of a comic and that's not including like all the design work and stuff. Um, so what comic book uh, people do is they all do like a, a zine, like a zine, a zine, a magazine, um, where they'll do like a mini comic, maybe one page, maybe as many as nine, and it's to try and get them noticed and stuff. So it's really cool that these indie devs have like grouped together and they seem like they're organized enough that this will happen, which is something like indie devs, in my experience, is like never finish shit and always over promise under deliver. But this seems like they'll deliver. It does seem like that. Um, give me one second. Do 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 do. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Um, let me get rid of that window. There we go. Cool. Leaked. Um, the gardens between. Let's watch this trailer. This looks kind of cool.
Yeah, I'm not I'm not entirely sure what the gameplay aspect is if you just like rewind and fast forward time to do stuff. I don't know. The gameplay looked a little bit mm. Um Steam, Windows, Mac OS, PlayStation 4, cool, cool, coming 2018. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. Cube 2. Cube 2 is already out, and I should really be playing it right now, because it looks fucking amazing. Um, it looks amazing. I haven't bought it yet. I'm going to buy this soon. Let's watch the trailer. Cube 1, for anybody who hasn't seen it, check out my video on YouTube. It's a three hour long video. I think it's in two parts. It's a full playthrough of Cube. It's a fantastic game. It lacks in story, but it has a lot of gameplay. Very, very fun. Didn't repeat puzzles too much times, so it was like very unique the whole way through. This is Cube 2, which uh, I think has more story. Let's have a look. I think it has a lot more story. I think that's the big difference. Mayday. This is Commander Emma Sutcliffe of the Vitruvius mission. I am stranded in an unknown location following mission success. Are there any survivors out there? I repeat, this is Commander Emma Sutcliffe. I am stranded in an unknown location following mission success. Out there, mission. Commander. I, I've been here before. I mean, it looks really good. The graphics look amazing, but that's to be expected. But if you listen to me and do as I say, we may actually make it back home. It's time to find out what we've done. It looks really good. If you're a fan of Portal, or if you're a fan of, uh, if you're a fan of The Witness, which I'm not, um, if you're a fan of Portal, Portal Two. Um, Cube 1 is really accessible, nowhere near as frustrating as The Witness, it's about 3 hours, you don't get stuck on puzzles for more than 10 minutes, um, not even more than 5 minutes actually, like a lot of the puzzles are trial and error and stuff like that, which is a little bit like Portal, if you remember what Portal's like, there's working out what to do and then there's actually doing it, Cube is kind of more towards working out what to do, but there's definitely a, um, mechanical aspect where you need to time stuff perfectly and stuff like that. It looks good. I'm gonna put Cube 2 on the list, even though I guess I'm probably gonna buy it, like, really soon. Cube 2 is great, I'm thinking, because Cube 1 was good. The only problem with Cube 1 is it's short, but it's like five bucks, whatever. Um, Samsara. Let's have a look. It's called Samsara because it's like the girl is the one that's trapped and has to go through her portals too. This is a girl, isn't it? Is that going to be the difference? Is that this is Sam and this is Sarah? I don't know. Whatever. It looks kind of cool. Um, looks kind of cool. Well, it's going to say it's on Steam. It's on Xbox One and stuff as well. What did that say? It's just so I know. Was it on PlayStation? It's on Steam, Mac. Apple Store, Windows Store, and Xbox One. Okay. How much is it? If this is a 50 bucks game. Yeah, 12 bucks. There you go. 12 pound arenos. Four user reviews. Eep. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Four user reviews. Yikes. I don't think that's enough to tell whether or not the game is good or not. Product received for free. Product received for free. Both of these guys have eight hours and they received it for free. Oh. 
And these guys have less than free hours. This guy received it for free as well. Uh-oh. What's going on here? This guy received it for free as well. There's so many of these guys that received it for free. That I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna not say. It says it's 77 levels. Let's just forget it for now. Um, The Fall Part 2 Unbound. Oh, this is some other guy. No, it's not. I thought this was some other guy's video. This is just a demo video from a con. Have you discovered the nature of the darkness you bring with you? I have not. But the longer I remain outside. Just gonna flick through this. I think I clicked at the precise moment that I should have. This lipstick will look ravishing on you, ma'am. She's fucking dead. That's a corpse. Another successful day. Is it that time already? Off to make tea for the master. That was a corpse, dude. Tea, sir. He's dead. That guy is rigor mortis. You have like so many teacups, dude. He's dead. Anyway, that doesn't look like my type of game. It looks a bit too weird out there. Whew. And we're on the final page, which is sports and racing games. Wow, was it? <sighs> Trailblazers. Mm -mm -mm -mm. If there's a really fun looking indie racing game, though, like. Oh, damn. This looks decent. This actually looks pretty cool. Oh, I get it. It's like Splatoon. Uh, it's like Splatoon and Wipeout. So, okay. If you've painted the track, don't you just want to like make the tightest racing line? So you'd be basically making the choice between doing slow corners to get more track coverage or doing tight racing lines. I'm not really sure how this gameplay would work, but it looks okay. It looks like it's going to be a working game. Um, play split screen online. That's cool in a way. That's actually kind of cool. Imagine if you're streaming. And you can watch what the other three people you're racing are doing. Like if you're playing with friends. This looks like a really cool game. Okay. So that's Trailblazers. It's on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, Mac, Windows and Linux. Um, is it on Steam? It doesn't have a Steam logo for PC. It just has a Windows logo. Hope it's not on Microsoft Store thing. Yikes. Trailblazers is not there. It's not out yet, though. So, coming soon. Do they have a Twitter? Um, more paint means more boost. Driving on your color gives you a speed boost. Strategically paint the track in key areas to give your team... Oh, to give your team an advantage. Boosting for long, uh, longer unlock... Oh, wait. Boosting for longer unlocks higher top speeds. Rewarding racers. Okay. That looks good. I'm going to write it down. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a game, right? Can I spell blazers properly today? Insert row below. 
this is this is a really annoying thing on Google Docs. The best way is uh, the best way to do multiple rows because there isn't a multiple row macro is to highlight the rows, and then it'll give you the option to insert that amount of rows into a table. I know it's like complete tangent to what we're doing, but it's true. You got to copy like sixteen rows and then make it thirty-two, and then you paste them, and that's how you get a bigger table. It's terrible. Did you ever play Star Wars Demolition? You said you played Star Wars Pod Racing. Star Wars Demolition was really good. Demolition was like kind of a deathmatch um, racing game. It wasn't really racing. It was basically just deathmatch with all the vehicles from Star Wars. It was pretty good. The land speeder was really good. I think um, I think it's the uh, Star Wars Episode One land speeder. MX versus ATV. Nope. Tennis World Tour. Nope. Gran Turismo Free. Wait, GTR free? What's GTR free? I don't know what this is. I thought that was Gran Turismo. It's not. <clears throat> um, yeah, it looks like a UK based simulation racing game. Not interested. The Crew 2. The Crew 1 sucked. So, Dakar 2018. Nope. Gravel. Let's have a look at this. Peggy three. Welcome to Gravel, the ultimate off-road challenge from Gravel Channel Broadcast. Choose your favorite path, earn your stars, and unlock the levels to reach the final challenge. Fight against Scott Parker to earn the cheers of the crowd in the stadium circuit. This game looks like it came out for Xbox 360. Unleash your fury into the savage wild rush. Yeah, this doesn't look very good at all. You can see the you can see the polygons and stuff. The textures are terrible. Um Yeah, so that's gravel. Nope. Lonely Mountains Downhill. This looks like it could be some type of comedy racing thing. I was just about to say, if you have a com like a kind of cartoony game like this, you need to focus on things like people's limbs falling off and stuff to be the new, uh, fuck. What's the, is it Excite Bike? I can't even remember. What's the, no, it's not Excite Bike. What's the game that PewDiePie and all the YouTube shits play? Oh, dude, like Markiplier and Jacksepticeye and all the bad YouTubers, like, <laughs> What's the game they play? Okay. Lonely Mountains Downhill. That actually looked okay. What's the name of that game? Give me a second, I'll look it up. Happy Wheels. Happy Wheels. That's what I'm talking about. Happy Wheels. Jesus Christ. So, we're done. We're actually done. We've looked at every game coming out. And we have this list. My one, like, problem is I didn't write down the release date to each game. But you want to know the fun thing? A lot of these don't even have release dates. Pretty much all of these don't have release dates. At all. Um... <laughs> I think, like, Deep Rock Galactic is already out. Um, Deep Rock Galactic is definitely already out. And Super Meat Boy has a release date. It's in, like, five days, I think. Tales from Walking Dead is October. A lot of these don't have release dates. This is the end of the year as well, Monster Hunter. So, and Cube 2 is already out as well. Mount Your Friends 3D is already out. And My Time at Porsche is already in early access. But a lot of these don't have release dates, so it's all good. This list, by the way, is on my Twitter, and it's on 
other places. I can't click Twitter because it'll probably have a butt on it. But um, that's kind of all I wanted to do today. We've kind of done it. It took an hour and 20 minutes, which is what I thought it was going to take. We've looked through the whole list of PC games coming out in 2018. And the next big release things are... There might be some stuff at Gamescom. Maybe. And then it's E3. So, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do with the rest of the stream. But that's it. We've looked through every single game that is coming out this year that is noteworthy. I think we've got a pretty comprehensive list. I mean... A bunch of single player games like Biomutant. Never Stop Sneaking was kind of one I hesitated to put on, so I'm not looking forward to that too much. Tunic looks good, Riverbond looks good. All these games look really good, and yep. Yep, yep. Um, thanks for watching, I guess. I'm not going to end the stream, but for the YouTube side, I guess, uh, look in the description for this link, a link to this thing. Um, I don't know. I'm going to drop the YouTube video off with an awkward ending, like I always do. Just me doing this for like 10 seconds. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> right. So what are we doing?